Hello everybody. This is going to be a really short pre-lecture, I promise. I just want to introduce the concept of solubility equilibrium. Okay, so this is really the last kind of equilibrium we're going to deal with as far as ice tables and whatnot. So what do we mean by solubility equilibrium? Well, let's start with a soluble salt that we know. So sodium chloride, okay, so that's an ionic solid, it's a salt. And if we were to put that in water, what happens? It completely dissociates into ions. Soluble salts, we assume, completely dissociate into ions. If you go on in chemistry, you'll find out that's not completely true at higher concentrations. You'll get aggregates of ions. But for now, we assume soluble salt completely dissociates, in this case, to sodium ion and chloride ion. All right, we know that. But what if we take a different salt that looks pretty similar? Let's take silver chloride. Okay, And I know you have your solubility rules memorized from last semester. And you remember that most chlorides are soluble. But there are a few that are not. And one of them is silver chloride. So if you have your book, try to find the solubility table and see that silver ion combined with chloride is an exception. It's insoluble. Well, what does insoluble mean? Well, it really means very slightly soluble. So a little bit of this will dissolve in water. Okay? But most of it will not. Okay? So this is an equilibrium. Okay? This one up here, we assume, completely goes to products. This equilibrium actually lies to the left. Lies far to the left. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay? But a tiny amount will go to silver cation and chloride anion. All right. So how do I know that this equilibrium lies far to the left? I look up the K value. And I have a book in front of me, and I'm going to look up silver chloride. And we call this KSP. We'll talk about S is for solubility, P for product. We'll talk about that in just a minute. KSP is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay. It's a very small equilibrium constant. Equilibrium lies very far to the left. Very little of that salt will dissolve. Okay? All right. So, what would a typical problem look like? Well, here's our ice table. Well, pure solids don't enter into the equilibrium constant expression. Don't worry about the amount of solid present in that solution. Water is a pure liquid. That doesn't enter in either. So we'll assume before any of that salt has dissolved, our products are zero. Which way does this shift to reach equilibrium? Yeah, it has to go to the right because we're, gonna have, we're not going to get very much product ions, but we're going to get something. So let's call that minus x plus x plus x. And at equilibrium, well, don't worry about the solids not in there, x and x. So. I think these are the easiest equilibrium problems are going to work because you only have to worry about the products. Okay? Our reactants are solid and liquid. They're not in there. So when we write our KSP expression, silver ion raised to the power of the coefficient, which is just one. Chloride ion raised to the power of the coefficient, which is just one. Is that easy? It looks simple, right? So why this is called solubility product, obviously we're dealing with solubility of that salt, but it is the product, the multiplication of those two components. Okay, product multiplication. You might want to think of it as we only include products of the reaction. It's just the product ions. It, we don't need the reactants. All right, very simple. We could then plug in our x. KSP is equal to x squared. Now, I'm not going to solve this, but you can do this. Given our KSP value, eh, maybe we'll do it real quick here, why not? Given our KSP value, we solve for x. And let's see what we get. One point two six times ten to the negative fifth. What are my units? Square brackets, what do they mean? Molarity. All right. 
So we call this the molar solubility. How much of that salt dissolves in terms of molarity? Because remember, look at our table up here. We're showing the amount of salt that dissolves as X. So that is the concentration of solution that we produce in terms of that salt. How much of it dissolves? What is the molar solubility? Moles per liter. How many moles dissolve in a liter of solution? Because we could write this as moles per liter. There you go. All right. So I think these are pretty darn easy. Now let me show you one more um, that's a little bit more complex. Another chloride salt that's not very soluble is lead to chloride. We're going to do the same thing in water. A little bit of this, well actually this one's more soluble than some. Let me look up what lead chloride is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it has a, a larger KSP value. But um, this is going to go to lead ions. And now here's where you have to watch out. Subscript of two, we're going to get two chloride ions. And that's going to be important because that is going to impact our calculation. So when we set up our ice table, the amount of salt that dissolves is X. One to one ratio, we're going to get X of lead lead cations, but what about chloride? Yeah, exactly, 2x. We have to use this coefficient. So when we set this up, don't worry about the solid, don't worry about the liquid. We have x and 2x. So we write Ksp, and I'm going to write this out so we make sure to square it. But let's do this. Okay, here's our product of the, our two products. Lead to the first power, chloride to the second power. Watch for that. So when we plug in, it's x times 2x squared, which is equal to 4x cubed. 2 squared is 4, x squared times x is x cubed. Now, you could look up the KSP value. I'm not going to do this calculation. I think you can do that, and you can do that in the quiz that's coming up. Um, let's see, lead chlor 2 chloride. 2.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so this one's a little bit more soluble than silver chloride, as you can see by that KSP value. Okay, you could solve for the, plug that in here, solve for the molar solubility. Not so bad. Now, one last thing I want to point out, and then I'm done with this pre lecture. So there will be a couple problems in sapling for you to work. Maybe solving for x, maybe just setting up an expression like this that KSP is equal to 4x cubed for that particular salt. Okay, so you'll see they, they, they vary. This first salt, you know, our KSP expression just equal to the x squared. This one is 4x cubed. Now, one thing you have to realize is there might be some problems that, two things to keep in mind. Some problems might give you x, okay, which again is our molar solubility. And I can spell solubility and then ask you to calculate KSP. Does that cause any problems? No, you're going to get to this same point, save for lead chloride. If they give you the molar solubility for lead chloride, you can plug in your X, solve for K. Oh, that erased. That was kind of cool. All right, not a big deal. Not a big deal. Second thing to watch out for. Quite often, solubility is expressed not in molar solubility, but solubility in grams per liter. Okay? If that's the case, don't worry. Grams per liter, you know how to convert from grams to moles, right? Yeah, we need the molar mass. So sometimes you might have to convert from solubility in grams per liter to molar solubility. Or the other direction, you might calculate molar solubility as we did up above. Here's our molar solubility way at the top that I calculated up above. And the problem might ask you for solubility in grams per liter. Well, then you would convert from moles per liter to grams per liter. It's just one extra step, so watch for that. I think that's it. Focus on these. Some students struggle with solubility equilibrium. I think it's the easiest calculations in the sense that our, 
what we end up with for our KSP expression, in this case KSP is 4x cubed, it's really easy to solve for x. We divide by 4, take the cube root. That's all you have to do. Okay? What I think confuses students, and watch for this, I think students get confused about, well, I don't know how much solid I have. You don't need to know. As long as it is in equilibrium with that solution, you're fine. You don't need to know how much water you have. Okay? And we're always looking at these as how much of that salt dissolves. So we start with the salt as a reactant. We're dissolving that salt in water, and it's going to break apart into its component ions. Watch for subscripts. You're going to have to factor that in. Okay? Now, these insoluble salts do not dissolve very much. The amount of ions you're going to get is going to be typically really small. But they are very slightly soluble. All right. Hopefully that wasn't too long. I think I around 11 minutes, maybe. Not so bad for me. I kind of get talking, as you know, and then kind of forget where I am. But that's okay. All right. I will see you in class soon. Take care.